Yeah, welcome back to Sports Business with Oru for Azaga. Today, I'm flying solo in the studio, but we have two great guests that are going to be joining us via Zoom. The president of the Nigerian Tennis Federation joins from Abuja, and the ex-Nigerian international professor Sadiq Abubakar joins from the United States. Hello, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Nigerians, and came uh, good to you. Uh, uh, be here to talk about uh, Nigeria. Uh, President, I think a good place to start is what the status of tennis um, in Nigeria um, is today. You know, uh, what, ha what would you say is the, is the status of tennis in Nigeria? Are we making progress? Um, where is the support coming from? Do we need support? You know, um, are we looking at the government? Are we looking at the private sector? Please give us your opinion. Uh, okay, thank you for this uh, big opportunity. Um, tennis in Nigeria has been um, climbing uh, positively, but uh, at a very slow pace. Uh, what, what has happened in tennis over the years uh, uh, is a slow, very slow growth in all the major departments of tennis that uh, that uh, has happened uh, facilities players uh, officiating coaching those four core areas growth has been very slow but um, e even as slow as it is we will have uh, some progress in at least ensuring that uh, the, the game is, uh, the players are better engaged and the uh, facilities are improved. Uh, but the summary is that the, 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 the pace of uh, development has been extremely slow. And one of the major reasons is that there is no uh, proper structured, funded um, program uh, that. Uh, the federations can run easily. So what uh, what we do is to uh, plan around uh, relationships with uh, a few corporate organizations and few individuals. Uh, sadly, of course, government will hear funding even on their part is uh, difficult. So I've been president for seven years. Uh, I can be quoted that uh, I have not received, or my federation has not received uh, uh, a dime from uh, my supervising ministry. So, uh, seven years. We've been doing all, all we have been doing purely based on um, relationships with some few corporate organizations and, uh, and uh, individuals. Okay, Mr. President, you say in seven years you have not received a dime from the government. Is that is that, did I hear you correctly? Perfectly. You know, you know, you know what I'm trying to repeat that and basically amplify it. Is the fact that, you know, out on the streets, people think that you guys in the federations uh, collect all of these monies from government and you misappropriate them, uh, you know. So I think it's a bit of a surprise that you're saying money has not come in. And I think it, it's worth, uh, you know, echoing. The, um, you, the sort of challenges you, you guys then face as a result. You, you heard me very clearly. You heard me very right. Uh, mm. I want to repeat it. I mean, President, since uh, July uh, 2017 to date, uh, I have not received or uh, my federation, to the best of my knowledge. Of course, we have only one account, is a TSA account, mm. and. Um, funds that comes there it's almost open to uh, the secretary and the treasurer of the federation and uh, we have not we have made several attempts uh, to uh, request for funds uh, sometimes we're asked to uh, make uh, budgets and so on we do them regularly but like i said and i'm repeating as the president of the Nigerian Tennis Federation for the past seven years, we as a board have not received any form of uh, financial support from uh, our supervising ministry. So even when you play the Davis Cup matches and you have to travel out of this country, you fund that yourselves? 
Absolutely. Uh, but sometimes we get support from uh, our international um, body. Uh, the body we are affiliated to the ITF. You know? So even the one we hosted recently, uh, we got what we call the hosting grant, okay. which is normally given to every um, um, host nations that is hosting many of the international uh, tournaments that the ITF is uh, hosting. So yes, we got this time thirty-five, thirty-four thousand dollars, okay. and of course we had to look for a lot of much more money to ensure that uh, we 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 hosted and thankfully won, uh, got promoted. So uh, funds came from individuals and a few corporate organizations that supported us, and uh, that's how we were able to um, host the tournament, and that's how. We, we have been uh, surviving. That's how uh, generally, uh, as a federation, we have been surviving. Again, I say I can be put it. Um, these things are verifiable. Uh, out on the street is, uh, is news that are unverified, you know. Every year, personally, I don't want to brag about it, uh, but I put lots of my personal funds into supporting. Uh, there's no year, minimum, maybe 50 million sometimes. 70, 80 million that personally from my uh, business that I put together to support uh, the games, of course, because of uh, the passion, uh, the tournaments we run yearly and, and so on. So uh, there are three, four major supporters um, in the areas of uh, uh, running some basic programs. Uh, tournament majorly. The central bank uh, uh, for the past 46 years has been running uh, a yearly tournament. So the last time uh, the cost of the whole tournament is 30 million. And before then it was like 20 million uh, yearly and that's what we get. These are all verifiable and uh, of course we have uh, rain oil, um, we have uh, the dollar hard court and a lot of the other ones are uh, like Dark Notch, uh, sponsored by a company called Dark Notch, I don't want to mention the name of the principal. But uh, this is how we, we have uh, done uh, uh, whatever we have done so far. But And then there are lots of private uh, groups, like the, I would say one of the few academies we have. Not my idea of what an academy should be, but I mean, we are running as an academy, Oran Academy is out there doing a lot of support in the area of uh, players. I mean, they take six or there about now, maybe about ten players. They support them and uh, they, they, they ensure that they, they are on. So okay. these are all individual and uh, private uh, initiatives. things that are yeah. initiatives that are ongoing. So that's how we've been. Uh, We've been, uh, we've been uh, surviving, and uh, that's it. Okay, let me bring in Prof at this point. You know, um, Prof, you've had the president. Yes, sir. You've had the president, uh, and you know, you live in a different environment. You live in the United States, and you've had, you've lived there a long time. What I want to understand is, you know, what is a federation supposed to do to to for a sport? In a country like Nigeria, you know, uh, and how do you how do you how do you grow the great, the game? Stay, for instance, in the United States. Well, um, it, it, it is sad to hear my president, um, you know, go back and you know uh, to share the challenges, you know, that uh, he and and his board uh, are going through to develop uh, tennis. It is true. I can confirm uh, what he has uh, said because I've, uh, I'm always involved in uh, the national level with some of the ministers and with this conversation. And I ask them why, and I never get a, a definitive uh, uh, response from them. Now, uh, because we have two different clients, uh, America or the industrialized world, mm. uh, 
function differently, approach sports differently, um, uh, uh, especially America, right? Nigeria and Africa, we approach sports uh, development, you know, with a different mentality and the culture different. So we have to go into specifics, uh, you know, to really have a, a fully understanding uh, of how these other nations prepare their athletes, right? Uh, we have to look at uh, at the micro macro level, and then of course at the micro level, you know, discussion to understand, you know. But I'm happy to hear, uh, you know, my president. Uh, we had a nice conversation last year about this time for about 20 minutes, and um, and then I appreciate uh, the honesty and uh, for the first time. I'm hearing specifics, uh, you know, so this is encouraging, you know, and uh, and uh, thank you for bringing us together. This is the first time in seven years that uh, a media uh, uh, organization, you know, has brought us together. So this is very, very good. Okay, so, uh, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Wh what does the Nigerian government, first... Should, the gov should it be the government's responsibility to fund federations, for instance? That's number one. And okay. number, and number right. two, if it is their responsibility, what do they expect from you? All right. There are two ways to answer that question. Mm. Um, ideally, like it happens in other clients, mm. uh, even in Africa, even in Africa, I can take Morocco as an example. Yeah, Morocco as an example. You know, uh, last year I became one of the vice presidents of CAP. So we were at uh, our inaugural meeting in Tunis this year, and um, um, the vice president in charge of the North, who is from uh, Morocco, was uh, chatting with me, and he said that. Uh, He's not getting support from his government at all. And I said, what do you mean? Uh, the government does not say, no. So they are giving him only 3.5 million euros in a year. What can he do with that? And, you know, I was uh, uh, majorly embarrassed, you know, because 3.5 <laughs> million euros and you're complaining, I don't get one time. And, uh, well, well, I mean, these are conversations we had. So, yes. Ideally, uh, there are two ways again. I want to answer. I want to answer that question. When things are fully functional, when the awareness, the culture, uh, the commitment of all uh, parts of people that are supposed to invo be involved in sports, when they are fully realizable government does not have to support in terms of financials okay. because again i start culture if we have a good culture of sports let me not limit it to tennis alone if we have a good culture of sports we we imbibe from from age five age six that sport is part of our life and sport is part of our culture and sport is part is supposed to be part of our expenditure mm. you know go, yeah, growing up and then as you grow you know that you should not go and watch a match free yeah. you should pay to watch so that culture that culture needs to be uh, created again I, I can't really say it was fully there even in the time Past in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, yes, we used to pay a token to go watch some uh, football or some other matches or sports, but the culture needs to be, be developed and, and, and be imbibed early. So when you know that sports are, is supposed to be part of your life expenditure, that you budget to, to ensure that you pay. To, to to take part in sporting activities or to 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 watch sporting activities, you know, 
it becomes part of you. It becomes easy when somebody talks to you about sports. It's 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 a sweet uh, sound to your ear to say, oh, he came to ask me that. I mean, there is a game coming up. Uh, let's go watch. You know, it's something that uh, that culture is not there anymore, or it's rather very low. So until if that culture is developed and and progress, which will take a long time the way it is going now, um, because there are several challenges even on the way. Yeah. If that culture goes on, it will be easy How? for you to get sponsorship, yeah. for you to get participation, for you to get everybody to come together, the media, the uh, coaches, the, the officials, everybody will jump at it easily. And so it makes the job easy. But oh, oh, hang on, hang, hang on happens, a moment, Presido. Uh, uh, Mr. Yeah. President, see, you, that culture that you're speaking about, mm. right, who mm. creates that culture? There's some people that would say, if you have programs developed by the P Federation that are interesting to young people and their parents, maybe from an early age, then ho hopefully you can develop that culture, like you have said, from an early age through their lives. Who creates the culture? Everybody. Everybody in the sporting industry. Mm. Everybody from the teachers in the in the in the primary school because it's about interaction. Who do mm. these kids interact with, and then what are they exposed to at that age? Uh, in 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 uh, again, I'll go to uh, the other clans where it is working better than Nigeria. You know, you wake up in the morning and you find kids five five. It's it's part of them, because it's part of the kids and their parents. The parents wake them up and ah, look, you have to go out, you have to go to work, you have to go for a walk, you have to go to play tennis, you have to go. So it's a culture that everybody uh, must be involved in and, and generated from uh, that childhood. But who are the people? Parents, number one. Number two, uh, teachers. And of course, these 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 are people that must have had ideas about sporting again that is where the culture comes in because the parents must even have the culture or know the culture or believe in the culture of sports to be able to impact it on the kids yeah. or the younger ones so that is where it starts from and then as it goes the government too has a role to play because a lot of these uh, sporting facilities a majority of them uh, are for, uh, are for for Nigeria uh, are provided uh, by 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 the government. So, you know, even when you plan cities, you plan Abuja, you plan Lagos, you create areas for recreation where you can, of course, assess such kind of facilities equally for development. So when you wake up in the morning and behind your house, you see a tennis court. You know, growing up, you will you will be inquisitive. You see people jump there every morning. One day, you as a kid, because you are exposed to seeing that, you will go there, and then of course, uh, you will uh, you will get exposed to 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 participation in that in that uh, particular sports or sports generally. So okay. it's everybody. Okay, it's so government. just so, before I go, just before I go to prof, yeah. You, you meet with government, you meet with the ministers, you meet with uh, maybe the permanent secretaries. What do they expect from you as the president of the well, Tennis Federation? What they expect, because it is, some of these discussions are very diffi are difficult to do uh, with them, because you have had several interactions with ministers, with the permanent secretaries. Um, some of the things are okay. Uh, uh, we don't have funds. We are waiting for funds. We don't have money. So um, we've made budgets, but uh, it's not financially backed or cash backing. You know, it's not there. So you go back. They expect you to go to the to the to the field and uh, look for sponsors and run your programs. That is what. But they equally expect you to bring athletes that will win. Uh, Olympic medals and uh, and Grand Slam uh, events. So, <laughs> That's what they expect, you know. Okay. But uh, it's not going to 
happen that way easily until, like I said, uh, we all come together and uh, ensure that uh, every department of every sport is taken care of. Okay, so Prof, you've heard the president talk about all stakeholders coming together to, to advance tennis in Nigeria. You yourself are involved in a private initiative. You are an ex-international. You played tennis at a very high level. And now you're thinking of giving back to society. And you are trying to, on your own, uh, muscle some of the, the, the former players, um, you know, to try and do something for tennis in Nigeria. Can you let us know what that is? and how much progress you have made? Let me, let me um, put clarity in what my president just said mm -hmm. regarding uh, you know, building a culture of participation, a culture of involvement, um, a culture of uh, information sharing to develop tennis and tennis uh, sports development in Nigeria. I have been very fortunate uh, since 2009 to interact with government, uh, the ministers, um, the DG, uh, some permanent secretary, uh, just recently uh, was very involved in uh, writing the 2022, 26, I mean 26 national sports industry policy. So I know the thinking, I know the mentality, and I know the challenges facing uh, uh, sports development in Nigeria particularly sports. So I'm, I'm really excited to hear, you know, from uh, my president that uh, uh, this is what uh, he and his board have been uh, facing um, for the last seven years, which of course I know because I've always been involved with my late father in uh, Adejmo, right? And then throughout that period, he may not know a lot of days, but at least he's knowing now you know, that yes, I have been involved for the last 34 years and I've accepted my role in being critical in the beginning, but uh, I am not anymore now because of course age and then because of the, uh, the wisdom and then because of the education. Now to come back to your, what he was referring to about, about culture, right? Remember, in these industrialized nations, it is the middle class that uh, sustain sports development so this is very fundamental in industrial nations right america australia britain and all of that right government you know they play a limited role in sports development it's all in the private sector right so if you if you bring it back to the challenges we're facing right now in nigeria in terms of the economic challenges and other cultural challenges you begin to understand you know what a lot of these uh, sports uh, presidents, including um, you know my president, right? You know are going through. So I'm very sympathetic to that. Now, coming back to your question of my role in the last 30, uh, 34 years, with that shifted, which is expected from being critical, you know, to now you know being participatory in my stuff. And I'm glad, honestly, I'm glad that I'm able to. You know, be having this conversation to let Prince, uh, the uh, president, know that look, you know, I mean, he has already told me that last year that yes, he, he believes in what I'm doing, he supports uh, the vision, but <clears throat> yeah, there are contradictions in what a federation does and what private uh, individuals or organization do. I understand this that distinction, right? I'm still Sadiq Abdullahi. I, I came from. Uh, from the poor, you know, all of the people that are in the academy that he talked about, right? Their parents cannot even put food on the table. My parents cannot, you know, are struggling to put food on the table. So we know that. So that is the angle that a lot of I'm coming from, and a lot of us that represented Nigeria. Remember, most of us are ball boys, right? You know, mm. so there's no level of arrogance now after you've we've gone through this and become successful. And I think the point the Federation has been missing as far as that is concerned, that there's no arrogance in my accomplishment, you know, because my father cannot read and write in English, okay? He was a messenger to the, to the federal government, 
in Lagos, state house in Nigeria. So all of this information are coming to the to the to the to the um, to the president and the board. You know that yes, in order for us to come together, we must build relationship first, and that is the problem I see. You know, the federation in the past have not really taken the time to build relationship because the perception is that yes, we are either too critical or maybe our approach. And I told the president last year, you know, that yes, you know, there's ignorance on our part, there is this exuberance on our part, and uh, and we've, we've matured and we can come together. So now, finally, to your to your point of mobilizing Nigerians, it's a tough top job to Thank mobilize you. Nigeria in the diaspora, top job to mobilize Nigerians in Nigeria, and top job to mobilize Africans to come in and then buy. But we're making progress. I'm really, really excited that, you know, that the uh, president came out and then spoke the way he has uh, spoken, you know, for us now to go back and rethink our approach and then come back you know, and then now that seven years, you know, going to is in his eighth year, right? You know, so I'm telling him, you know, what legacy do you want to leave? Forget about, you know, all the perception you've had about Sadiq Abdullah, Yunduko Diesel, and the rest of that, right? You know, so you know, put that aside. What what do you want to leave behind, right? You know, uh, working. We're going to be working on the guidelines for the National Sports Federation. You know, if uh, things are going the way. I am being, you know, in the conversation I'm having to, to look at the new guidelines that will, and then the plan that will allow, you know, uh, government to respond to what he just said. You know, so for me, I'm in touch with uh, the minister himself, the current minister, right? You know, we've spoken two or three times, and, uh, you know, and hopefully those things that he mentioned can be addressed appropriately bringing them together i i'm involved like i said i know what the problems are i know what the solutions are right but i cannot do it alone right you you, you have to trust me i have to trust you and if there are benefits let us share those benefits you know and i like one thing again before i uh, you know I, I i stop right you know he gave us specifics about what he the grant he gets from itf right and then the, the inter the politics within the calf which I know, I know all of these things because you know a lot of people privately and I ask questions, right? So for that okay. alone, my respect to the to the president. So this is uh, this, this some of this problem can be addressed, right? If we all come together. Okay. Um, so president, I'm going. What well, we're going to go on a short break now. When we come back, we're going to be talking about you know the business of tennis. Now the government is not really um, forthcoming with financial assistance and this game needs to run. I appreciate that today you are a president who you know can afford to chip in uh, substantially if, if when the need arises but what if tomorrow we have a president who is not financially as strong as you are as you are what is he going to do all right that's number one number two if the government is not coming up with money, how do we then uh, raise capital for the sport of tennis in such a way that the, the federation can be self-funding and entrepreneurs can make a lot of money out of this? Remember what Professor Sadiq Abubakar said when he said in the developed world, it's the middle class that sustains sports development. If we take that and we add it to your point about culture, if we can grow the culture, and add that to middle class interest, uh, sports can thrive in Nigeria and tennis would be one of the top sports um, without, it, without a doubt. So we take a short break now. When we return, we focus on the money. <laughs> 